and the first umbilical tower is separated. The third stage ground power umbilical will separate shortly as well. We're standing by for the issuance of the launch command. Start confirmed. Start confirmed. The second umbilical tower is now separated. Inside 10 seconds to launch. Preliminary. Intermediate. And we had liftoff, liftoff of the Soyuz rocket and the TMA-11M spacecraft on a truly Olympic leap, delivering three more crew members to the International Space Station on a historic mission to continue the seamless transition of humans on their own relay to continue studying science and space. 20 seconds. Jets firing. Beautiful launch uh, already, 45 seconds since liftoff. 40 seconds. Passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. One minute, 10 seconds into the flight. The velocity is already 1,100 miles per hour. Second, right nominal. We copy loud and click. Clear, and everything's fine on board. Everything is nominal. And we can copy loud and clear, too. We can see you on camera, and everything is going on nominally. Actually, the launch was pretty smooth. Now we can feel some G load, but we take it all right. Standing by for escape tower jettison. You're all nominal. and jettison of the uh, four strap-on boosters. They, these have completed their job. They've dropped away in an altitude of about 28 miles. The vehicle's now traveling 3,300 miles per hour. One hundred and forty seconds, everything is nominal. Everything is great on board as well. We are monitoring. Reporting the second stage engines are in great shape. Uh, and the weather is. And the uh, shroud is now separated uh, from the vehicle. The rocket's altitude is now about 48 statute miles. Control descent. Control. Three minutes into the flight. Soyuz is traveling at about 4,700 miles per hour. Can you see Inside, uh, we can see three crew members, uh, Koichi Wakata. As you see, the uh, onboard mascot with the crew members, uh, one, of the, one of the Olympic Winter Game mascots, a polar bear. Uh, 200 seconds, thrusters firing, got it. Everything is uh, performing uh, as expected with the all systems aboard the vehicle. Core stage of the Soyuz uh, is 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter. That single engine uh, with four fuel chambers providing 96 tons of thrust for the uh, three and a half minutes of operation. This should burn until about the four minute, 45 second mark. So uh, in about 30 seconds, that engine uh, should shut down. The vibration is uh, almost negligible. It's a smooth flight. 
Yes, we can feel the G. All attitude to control of the rocket uh, is very stable. Feeling good, copy. Four minutes, 30 seconds into flight. Schedule parameter is nominal. Control system is working nominally. And now have third stage ignition and second stage uh, separation. separation. And we confirm. And it was also five minutes into flight. The separation occurs at an altitude of 105 statute miles. The soy is now being propelled by the single engine of the third stage, providing 30 tons of thrust. It will burn for the next four minutes or so. Rick Mastracchio uh, in the to the uh, left of the Soyuz commander Mikhail Turin. First of that working nominally. In all reports, the uh, third stage engine is uh, operating nominally. Mission is nominal. Six minutes into flight, about two and a half minutes uh, or so remaining in powered flight. Upper stage is working perfectly. Very smooth flight, the crew reporting. The launch uh, occurred on time at 10.14 p.m. Central Time, 10.14 a.m. Baikonur Time. Just minutes uh, after the International Space Station passed directly overhead at an altitude of 260 miles. Seven minutes into flight, Soyuz uh, continuing to accelerate rapidly uh, toward orbital velocity, approaching now 13,000 miles per hour. Nominal copy. Everything is okay on board. Everything is nominal. What is that? Just about one more minute remaining in powered flight. Once the third stage delivers the Soyuz to orbit and the module is separated, there's a series of pre-programmed commands that will be executed to prepare the spacecraft for orbital operations. They're known as time-tagged commands, and they allow uh, many of the Soyuz's systems to be automatically activated by onboard computers at precise times that are stored in those computers. Eight minutes into flight. Another 45 seconds uh, scheduled for powered flight. All has gone very smoothly uh, throughout the launch profile for this Soyuz TMA-11M spacecraft, carrying Mikhail Turin, Rick Mastracchio, and Koichi Wakata to a rendezvous with the International Space Station Thursday morning, uh, increasing the size of the station uh, from uh, the current six crew members to nine crew members, the first time that that has occurred uh, since 2009. In fact, Koichi Wakata was uh, uh, part of that as, uh, back when he uh, served as part of Expeditions 18 from March to July of 2009. Thrusters are off. Separation confirmed. We have confirmation of engine shutdown and module separation from the third stage. Fast up. Congratulations with success. Ascent and here is MCC Moscow. Best of luck to you guys. Have a good mission.
MCC Moscow, Vastak, copy you loud and clear. Everything was nominal. Had a request. Hey, you hear me, Kyle? Turin uh, establishing contact, uh, communications contact with uh, Mission Control Center in Moscow. Standing by for the pressures and KDO parameters. Also start preparing the television system. We'll be sending the command via command radio link. Now that the vehicle is in orbit, the automatically executed uh, pre-programmed commands uh, should be in the process of uh, deploying the antenna and the solar arrays on the spacecraft. This is SR pressure 807 by O82 and 869er. The uh, preliminary orbit of the Soyuz is 143 by 118 statute miles, obviously uh, uh, well below that of the International Space Station. Ready to copy the parameters from the table. 